Hello and welcome to my video uh, of my steam boiler startup for autumn of 2024. The reason I'm recording this is because um, if you've seen my other videos, you know that I like to uh, minimize the corrosion of my boiler, right? My boiler is from uh, like 2020, winter 2020 I put it in. And um, so I've done everything I can or most everything I can to keep the corrosion down. And one of those things is to keep the pH of the boiler water up around 10 or 11, which I have done that for sure, and maybe even a little higher. But then I thought last year, uh, like early in the season last year, I thought another way I could keep it from corroding would be not to introduce regular household water into it. Because... Uh, in my municipality and in most municipalities, they inject oxygen into the water because it makes it taste better. So we know that when you heat up water, it drives the oxygen out. And uh, I will cut away the video now to show you uh, some water heating on the stovetop. And I'm not heating it to boiling, I'm just heating it to the point where bubbles start to form Again, these are not bubbles from boiling. It's not 212 degrees yet. These are just air or oxygen rather that's, um, that's suspended or in solution, I guess, in the dissolved in the, in the water. And when you heat the water, it drives the oxygen out and causes these bubbles. So that's what we're seeing here. Um, where was I? Yeah, so I didn't wanna put household water into the boiler because of the oxygen. And I thought, all right, well, I can, I can heat the water up and then add it to my boiler. And that's what I did for part of the season. But then I have this um, heat pump water heater over here. And I started collecting the condensation from that. And I also started collecting the condensation from my basement dehumidifier. And I, when my... Uh, when my boiler needed water to be added to it, I don't have an auto feeder on my boiler, okay? It's just a manual one, but when I needed to add water, I just added it here to my skim fittings. And I added it by hand using water that either I that either I heated up on the stovetop to drive out the oxygen or I used I used uh condensate from the water heater or from the dehumidifier. So all pretty much all all last season I didn't put any household water into this boiler. And I let it just run like normal all last season and then I at the end of the season I I um filled up the uh boiler. It's right now it's like just right here, it's just right here at the top. Um is where the water level is. I like to fill up the boiler that high, you know, higher than the normal water level, which it's a single focus is right there where that line is this line right here that's the normal water level i like to fill it a little higher than that at the end of the season so it's not sitting there at that same water level all the time uh another you know that's another way to uh, in my mind anyway that's another way to keep your uh boiler from you know rotting out at, at the water line so now that I'm going to start it up this season, I want to see how much mud is in the is in the bottom of the boiler. So we're going to we're going to open up this port first. I want to see what how much might be here in the in the um, sight glass drain. And then I'll go ahead and just see how, what comes out of here, too. But uh, to see how much um, how much mud or corrosion might have occurred um, all last season and this whole last summer while it's been sitting here. So let's do that. I have no idea what's going to come out of here, but let's see. Wow. All right. So <laughs> that was like totally clear. I don't, I mean, there's a couple little 
There's a there's a few pieces of um, probably rust in the bottom, but uh, but there's no mud, right? So these chunks. I don't know if if these are just loose chunks that were in there, or if they are, you know, chunks of rust that that they may have been chunks of rust that came from the piping, from the from you know the main or from the, a radiator and worked their way down into the boiler, or they could have broken loose from the inside of the boiler. But but there's no there's none of that mud that appears um, that appears usually after boiler water's been sitting. I mean zero. This is less than I expected. I thought there'd be a little. Uh, let me let me dump this out. That's a good look at it before I dump it out, right? Let me dump this out because I want to see what comes out of the other places too, and not have it all mixed up. All right. So here's. Let's see what comes out of the sight glass drain. Wow. Yeah, that's. There's no mud in there either. It's uh, just slightly discolored. Just a little discoloration. It's like slightly, slightly brown, slightly browner than clear. So I guess there's a tiny bit of, of uh, really small rust particulate in there, but nothing like what I usually see when I, even in the past on this boiler, I think I've I've seen more than that come out even during the season, like if I drain a little bit out. All right, let's try this one. Yeah, totally clear. Totally clear. So I didn't know, like I said, I didn't know what this was going to be like. Uh, but, I mean, this is pretty clear to me that my boiler is not rusting at all. Like no, there's no there's no measurable amount of corrosion coming out of here. Like you can see, it's a little bit it's a little bit brownish. And that's it. But this by no means is you know any kind of thing to be concerned about. I was just looking at someone else's boiler yesterday, and their boiler had been uh, not that long ago had um, it had had the water drained out of it because someone replaced. Uh, someone replaced this fitting here, this valve on the drain. So they had to drain a lot of water out to do that. And then they, and then it was refilled. And I just, I did this there and it came out like it looked black. Uh, and then it ran clear, you know, not too long after that, but there was this black amount in the, in the beginning there that came out. And that was just from the boiler sitting for, you know, not even in operation it was just sitting during the during the summer so this boiler let me let me restate it this boiler ran all last season i never i never drained i never uh drained anything off of it all last season i only refilled it with water that i had removed the oxygen out of so that was either water that was heated on the stove top or it was water that was condensed from like I said, from my uh, water heater or my or my dehumidifier. I mean, I'm never gonna, I'm never gonna, I'm never gonna crank that fill valve again on this boiler. I'm only gonna put water in it that's had the oxygen removed. Like, why would I? Why would I do that? I mean, it's gonna outlive me anyway, probably. But now it's there's no reason why this boiler couldn't last. I mean, how long could it last? It could last decades. Well, it would probably last decades anyway. It's a peerless. But it's going to last a lot of freaking decades with this much rust after a whole season of use plus a whole summer of sitting. Crazy. So uh, there you go. So, uh, oh, yeah, the other thing I wanted to do was on camera. Sorry about this here. I've got my pH and uh, I wanted to just check what my pH was at. Knowing me, like I said, it's probably pretty, pretty, pretty high. Yeah, look, <laughs> that's very high. That's like, you know, there's the, there's the key. This is in the, 
I mean, you can't tell because it's so dark. It's in the 13, 12, 13, or 14 range. You know? 13 is there at the top. Here's 12 and 14 at the bottom. I mean, it's, it's, it's as dark as it can get for a piece of um, litmus paper. So, yeah, that's what I do. I, I run it pretty high because it doesn't seem to matter. It, it never surges. Uh, so, yeah, pretty, uh, pretty good. Like, no corrosion. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to drain off some of this extra water. I mean, I might save it. <laughs> it's it's pretty pretty alkaline, so it's a little dangerous. You know, it, you don't want to have it around where anyone can drink it. Or you don't want to have it on your uh, certain parts of your skin. But um, I might save it because it's so clean. I could I could I could add it back to the boiler. Uh, you know, as, as some water leaves the boiler, you know, during the normal heating season. But uh, I'll drain some of that off and, uh, and I'll start the boiler up and we'll see if any, if we'll see if once it starts boiling, if any, if any mud gets kicked up and then settles back out. I'll, I'll basically do, repeat this thing where I drain uh, some of the water off and we'll see if there's any mud in it. All right, cut. Okay, so my call for heat ended and, uh, it's been sitting for a few minutes. I don't, I don't think there's going to be anything that's going to come out of here, but we're going to take a look uh, just to be sure. Yep. It's clear there. It's going to be clear here. It's clear everywhere. Yeah, so, so that's that. Um, starting up another call for heat here. But uh, yeah, so I mean, totally, almost, com almost completely clear water after a whole year. So the answer I think to how to make your boiler last forever is to bump up the pH and only add water that's either been heated up to drive out the oxygen or add distilled water and uh, I mean, this thing is never gonna rot out. It's gonna be, how many years could it last? Who can even tell? I'm gonna be dead. But uh, there you go, just, um, just on principle, I'm gonna only be adding water here from now on and it's gonna be water that doesn't have oxygen in it. So that's the end of the video.